let's let's <coughs> leave this aside for a minute. Um, hi. Uh, I, I, my name is Rakesh. I am Rakesh314 uh, on Twitter, so you can follow me there. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I'll wait. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I'm not from Bangalore. I'm actually from Bombay. Um, and I'm here on sort of a holiday. Uh, you guys have got some awesome beer props. Uh, it's just been one blur the last 15 years. <laughs> um, but I came here with the intention of solving a problem uh, that I have been facing in my startup. So I run this company called Reception, and Debugify is my competition. So uh, <laughs> uh, no, but it's all good. Like, you know, it's awesome. We need competition in this space. It's a growing space. Um, so anyway, so I run uh, Reception, and um, and so you know, and I'm a cheap ass. I don't I don't like to spend money on infrastructure and stuff like that. So I would rather optimize, you know, my app to to sort of milk every every piece, every ounce of CPU power from that. Um, so 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 yeah. So there is this issue of scaling, which is which is a, a big problem. Uh, it's only a problem if 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 uh, if you are big. So in the sense that uh, most people don't have a scaling problem, and you know that's cool. Don't bother about scaling if you don't have a scaling problem. Don't go there. Um, but when, once you start hitting the scaling issues, um, and so then the first solution is obviously throw money at it, you know, get faster hardware, stuff like that. Don't touch your code, it's too complex. Uh, and then lastly, when, when you're as cheap as I am, then you will start thinking about, oh no, you know, I don't want to throw more money at the problem, I'm going to try to fix my code now. Um, so this is where I was at. And, um, and so um, the, the problem that I wanted to solve particularly was that of, of, of breaking up my applications into pieces. So all right, I'll backtrack. One of the ideas of scaling, at least one of the ideas, is that you don't build large apps at all. You break up your apps into small pieces, and you deploy each of these small pieces independently. I had talked at length about this at the JS Foo in, uh, in Bangalore that happened, uh, the last event. And uh, I had not actually gotten to do anything about it yet. I mean, I, was, I had like a patched up solution that was working. So I'll, I'll explain the, the scenario, is that you break up the app into pieces, and then you figure out how you can get the apps to talk to each other. And the benefit of doing this is that you're, you can now take an individual app and scale just that one app because that's where you will have your performance bottleneck. Like generally, it's not your entire stack that will have performance bottlenecks, right? So you just take one thing and now you can scale this, make this run across multiple CPUs, across multiple you know, processors, or computers and even if you want, you know, across the network, you can do all of this kind of stuff. So it's, you know, uh, and you, you, just, you just need to deal with small pieces now. You don't need to deal with your entire app, right? But of course, splitting it up into multiple pieces. Oh, there's one more benefit is that when you deploy, for example, you're not deploying the entire app, you're deploying just one thing. So, you know, everything doesn't go down for deployment. And just one little thing goes down for deployment. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, with this in mind, I was thinking of coming up with a solution to deal with this. Uh, and my idea of coming to Bangalore was to sort of sit down, geek out, and, you know, uh, maybe do something about this problem. Turns out I ended up getting drunk too much, and uh, yeah, <laughs> there was not there was not too much done. So warning, everything I'm going to show you show you right now is all written on hangovers. Uh, just warning you. <laughs> um, so I created so based on this idea that I just discussed, I created this library called Cumin, uh, which stands which is C U M I N, uh, which is uh, a Q minimal Q. You get the pun. Uh, so anyway, so that's what cumin is, right? And uh, I thought I would take the this is the first push to to get. Um, so it should be up now, hopefully. Anyway, uh, so what what Cumin does, and I'll show you. I'll I'll just quickly show you stuff from inside my examples folder. Um, so if I if I look at uh, uh, right, so this is the way I would split up. This is just a fake simulation of an app that's doing something. <laughs> Essentially, what I'm doing is I'm calling Cumin dot nq, which takes a message and dumps that into a queue so that somebody else can pick it up later and process it, right? That's, so I had to go through a lot of cycles to make sure that it's only two methods really on the library. So it's really, really simple to use. Um, and there's no reason why you shouldn't, unless of course you are not dealing with scale problems, in which case you shouldn't. But you know, so, so there's one method called nq. You call cumin.nq, pass it a key, which is just some queue that you wanted to nq under, and some data that you want to pass it, right? And so, um, 
Similarly, there is a, a listener, listen.js, which is cumin.listen, and you know you can then uh, get data one after another. It's a very simple, simple node paradigm. Now to go with this, so so this solves the problem to a large degree. I've tested this for throughput. I don't have benchmarks num benchmark numbers, but it's like a couple of thousands every second that can easily handle. I'll probably show you something right now. Um, I created a companion project as well. Uh, oh, by the way, I just thought I'll do this as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it'll probably land up on NPM as well. Um, so uh, so I'll, I'll I'll show you a companion. Uh, project that I created along with this called Human Monitor, which also I guess I'll push to, <laughs> to get up now. And uh, right, so Cumin Monitor is a little tool that lets you monitor what's happening in as your as messages are passing across the network. Right? So to give you an example, um, I can start Cumin Monitor here, right? And so yeah, socket I/O and all that, so that I get geek cred. Uh, so it, this is a small, simple dashboard of what's happening in your queues. Now, meanwhile, um, yeah, over here. Um, so I'll start enqueuing items into the queue and you can see that the queue starts getting populated with messages. There are messages now sitting in this queue. And uh, you know, in, in a different shell, I can Right. So as you can see, the, what this means is that messages are going in. There is nobody who's processing this message yet. The app that is responsible for processing this message has not come up yet. But this means that anybody who's using the app right now, though, from the front end, will see that the app is working, right? Because it has it has handled your request, has done something with it, right? It's not finished its pipeline yet, but the user does not need to know that. So your website looks up, right? Things might be down in, in between. That's okay. Right? The website <coughs> looks up. Also, everything that's supposed to happen is now stored in this queue. So whenever your the rest of your app comes up, it can pick up from where it left off, right? So I'll just show you uh, the listener. That is that obviously now picks up and starts flushing out the queue uh, as it's going. Right, so you, you can pump in data as you want and then pump data, data back out. Now both of these are obviously independent processes. They're two separate processes. They might be running on different machines. It doesn't matter. It just you know it just keeps chugging along to uh, ensure that your data is done well. Now uh, one last thing that I want to talk about is the problem of of deployment and shutting down your apps. Um, is that when you kill an app, you might have things in the event loop in Node uh, that are still being processed and not completely processed yet. And you kill the app and you might lose things that you had got done, right? So that's one of the things that I have built into this is that it can, it can do a graceful shutdown. So when I control C, it actually checks what all is pending, makes sure that it's all cleared out, and only then does it shut down. Um, so, so yeah, so it does it does graceful uh, shutdown internally. Obviously, now that I've killed the app that's listening, the queue is building up. Right? So anyway, yeah, that's all I've got. Thanks. <laughs> any, any questions? Sorry, any questions? Where the data is? Oh, it's using Redis as as, as uh, at its backend. Yeah. Any plans of offering this as a hosted service? As a hosted service, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a simple npm install. It's <laughs> why do you need a hosted service for this? Because you take care of the uptime and reliability, which is what the main concern is. Right, but then all right. Uh, well, fair enough. So this is actually designed for very high throughput. So the data that I actually have to deal with is very high throughput. Right, right. If I have to even go over a network, it will it will be painful. SQS and stuff like that do uh, queues as a hosted service. So you know that's probably a good idea. This is great. I, I, my particular use case was that I wanted on an <coughs> internal infrastructure and I wanted fast. Like I wanted to be able to hammer lots of messages to it, like it's nobody's business. Like, so you can have multiple listeners in this? Oh sure, yeah, yeah. You can have there's there's no problem. And you can support. go in the cluster and yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's no there's no other queue management in Node. Like there is there are tons. Everybody uh, it's it's almost like how people create uh, 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 CMS is in PHP. People seem to be creating. <laughs> but yeah, so there are there are tons of uh, of Q of Q apps, and um, in fact, one of the things that I'm inspired by is this thing created by TJ called Q K U E, uh, 
which i which was which was closest to what i wanted but that that was also not designed for high throughput kind of scenarios that's what i wanted here so that's so what why I'm not using like random mq or because I, honestly, because I'm dumb and I've not actually looked at that. Secondly, I thought you know reinventing the wheel is obviously it looks like it's an in interesting idea. And thirdly, is that that looks like a hairball to me. It looks like some Java guy came and decided that we need all these factories and all of these like you know, it just looks like a hairball to me. So I just <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> okay, last one last question maybe. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, so guys, this is like the end of the meetup. It's not quite finished. Um, I would like to thank um, um, Swissnex for hosting the event, and um, also Hesgeek, like Kiran, Zena. Thank you guys for shooting uh, the the talks. Um, Jitendra also thanks for advertising Bangladesh on the Facebook Facebook groups. Hey, I created the event also. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and now we'll finish uh, with some uh, snacks offered by Swiss Snacks that direction. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it was awesome, right? Yeah. So if you have feedback, uh, don't, don't hesitate to, to tell us. Uh, if like, you have uh, a mic up, please. Yeah. yeah. When is the next meetup? Next meetup will be, I guess, in two months. <laughs> yeah. And if somebody wants to. Ah, yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to use this format like. Flash talks, big talk, flash talks. So yeah, next time, please uh, uh, just email me or Twitter me uh, if you're interested to, uh, to talk about something. Thanks, guys.